Now at five, pandemic progress in Washington. On March 22nd, we take one more step in beating the virus and reopening our economy. How phase three of reopening will impact our area. Plus, a community rallies around a retired Portland teacher battling COVID. How former students, healthcare workers, and his wife helped give him the strength to survive. And then... Wright gets it away from half court. No. no good! And Oregon State, for the first time in school history, <laughs> has won the Pac-12 tournament. The Beavers are going dancing. We'll catch up with Orlando Sanchez on the historic Pac-12 championship win for a team picked to finish last in the conference. This is KGW News at 5. Thanks so much for joining us here at 5. I'm Brittany Falkers, and we begin with a big announcement that a lot of struggling businesses and their customers are glad to hear in Washington. Governor Jay Inslee says restaurants, gyms, and other establishments can open to 50% capacity soon. Tim Gordon reports from Vancouver. Main Street is showing more signs of life. Restaurants, bars, and other indoor venues are at 25% capacity now. And starting March 22nd, they go to phase three statewide. This means our restaurants, gyms, fitness centers, movie theaters, some of the hardest hit businesses in the Washington state will be able to return to 50% capacity. We visited Dolan's Village Cafe in Vancouver's Uptown Village when it was doing outdoor and takeout only. Now it's got people inside enjoying a Sunday brunch in a warm dining room with twice as many allowed in soon. It's about time. I'm ready to start enjoying life again, get back in the back in action. It's Penny Clark's first time dining in at yeah, a restaurant absolutely. during the and pandemic. 50% sounds long. even better. It's definitely in the right direction. Absolutely. I've been uh, I've been in a one woman office doing my own thing for a long time, so I'm really happy just to be out. It's, yeah. Downtown, Kiggins Theater has had very limited movies at the theater itself, relying on selling virtual screenings to loyal customers instead. Now it will be able to open up the theater to half capacity on a regular basis soon. Also opening up, sporting events from the pros to youth sports. Fans watched from outside the fence as Prairie High School played Mountain View at McKenzie Stadium this past Friday. Washington will allow 25% capacity in the stands for youth sports a little sooner, March 18th, in time for next weekend's games. Back in Uptown Village, the Tip Top Tavern has survived the pandemic, but it's been a struggle. Patrons here and wherever they like to be are glad to hear half capacity is just days away. I would love to see that. I, I actually, I would love to see 100% capacity, but baby steps. So going to 50% capacity next week, and of course the ultimate goal for all these businesses is to open up fully. But for that to happen, we all need to continue to be smart, continue to wear the masks. Health officials say this is not over yet. In Vancouver, Tim Gordon, KGW News. Tim, thank you. Now, Multnomah County here in Oregon, meanwhile, is now at the moderate risk level for COVID. Oregon updated its risk levels on Friday. The change here locally means indoor dining capacity is up to 50% at restaurants. Outdoor dining has a 150 person limit and retail stores can open at 75% capacity. Today, Oregon reported 234 new coronavirus cases and no new deaths. Today also marks exactly one year since the first Oregonian died of COVID-19. To date, the virus has killed 2,322 people in our state. On the vaccination front, state health officials say more than 1.3 million doses have been administered. That's out of a delivered supply of close to 1.6 million doses. They expect those numbers to ramp up in the coming weeks. A retired Portland teacher is out of the hospital tonight after weeks fighting COVID-19. There were moments family thought he wouldn't make it, but Galen Atlin shares how he got through with help from the community he once served. On January 15th, 60-year-old Rick Barty of Portland went to the hospital, delirious and unable to breathe because of COVID-19. A ventilator wasn't enough. He needed special life support equipment called ECMO. What was that like? Hell, it's a simple word. He was transferred to OHSU for treatment, and the outlook was grim. They told us that he had a 40% chance of making it. Rick's wife, Julie, struggled. Because you want to be hopeful, but then on the other hand, you kind of want to be prepared. But she was by his side nearly every day. 
They got married a year ago, right before the pandemic. I celebrated my 60th birthday in the hospital and our first anniversary in the hospital. So you've spent your milestones going through a trial that most people never will have to go through. Right. What has that been like? What's your takeaway from all of that? There's a reason I'm here. I don't know what that reason is, but grateful that I made it to 60. I'm grateful that I could say I've been married a year to a wonderful person. Rick's 30 years as a teacher came back big time. Hundreds of cards fill the walls of his hospital room from former students and families he impacted. One of the OHSU doctors even had kids in Rick's third grade class at Brittle Mile Elementary. Hundreds of people also donated more than $20,000 to help with his medical bills. The feeling for Rick, overwhelming. Teachers go into the business of teaching, not for the money, God knows, but it's to make a difference. Then on March 12th, the day finally came. Rick was well enough to leave OHSU, cheered on by the staff who helped him survive. From the nurses to the CNAs to the doctors, truly amazing. Even without underlying conditions, he's still on oxygen and slowly recovering in a physical rehabilitation program. His message to everyone else is stay the course. Wear that mask, wash those hands, keep social distance. COVID is real. Anybody who says it's not, take a look at me. And share gratitude for life and love. Galen Etlin, KGW News. Well, it wasn't gone for long, and now the fence is back around the federal courthouse in downtown Portland. The fence was just taken down this past Thursday after being in place since protests from last summer. But then on Thursday night, protesters broke windows and burned plywood set up to protect the courthouse. At least one person was arrested. Federal agents used tear gas against the crowd. Now, protests yesterday, however, remained peaceful, unlike what we saw on Thursday and Friday nights this week. On Saturday, vigils and various protest events were held to mark one year since police killed Breonna Taylor in her own home in Louisville, Kentucky. One of the largest was last night at Revolution Hall. Supporters say they're continuing to call for justice since none of the officers involved in Taylor's death have been charged. She needs to be remembered for existing and to say that like black lives matter like she mattered we matter and we need to do more work to make sure that it doesn't happen again later in the evening a large group gathered outside the justice center while protests on thursday and friday night resulted in vandalism and arrests this gathering stayed peaceful police have not reported any arrests or damage related to it Developing tonight, two people are hurt following a shooting in Fairview. This happened last night near Northeast 205th Avenue, just north of I-84. When Multnomah County deputies arrived, they say they found two men had been shot. Both are in the hospital with serious injuries. No information yet about a suspect. Witnesses say they did hear a speeding car around the time of the shooting. Deputies are asking anyone with information to contact the Multnomah County Sheriff's Office tip line.